to the edge. We're moving onward to the edge. Here we are together. This fragile little world. This fragile world. Onward to the edge. We're moving onward to the edge. Here we are together. This fragile little world. Do you believe in God? Me, I, the so, creator. Uh, yeah. So I'm the the more I look at the universe, um, just the less convinced I am that there is something benevolent going on. Neil deGrasse Tyson, the renowned astrophysicist and science communicator, has been outspoken about his views on the existence of God and organized religion. Tyson's perspective on these topics has been shaped by his scientific background and his commitment to evidence-based reasoning. Is there a particular God you have in mind that you want me to comment on? Huh. Okay. I missed that. Because, yeah, you, if you go to, a, if you go to, you go online and you, in, a, in a Google search, you type God, gods worshipped by humans. There's a tally of all the gods ever worshipped by humans in the history of civilization. And it just goes screen after screen after screen after screen. So when you say, do you believe in God? Is there, is it, which God? Is it Zeus? Is it Poseidon? Is it the, the Jewish God? Is it the Christian God? Because the Jewish God from the Old Testament is filled with wrath, okay? All right, and, and smoting and smiting and whatever the, the, the past tense verb is. And so, to, and the New Testament, the, God is kinder, all right? A little nicer, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all right. So you look at all of this and you say, is that the God you want me to comment on? Or is there some other God? Typically, it's the Judeo-Christian blend there. In that context, I would say in my studies of the universe, I, I value evidence and I don't see evidence for any kind of um, active intelligence or power over anything. Yeah. And but you, if you had it, everything showed to me. I'm yeah. all in. Tyson has expressed skepticism towards the traditional concept of God, particularly the idea of an all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-good deity. In various interviews and public appearances, he has argued that the existence of natural disasters, diseases, and other forms of suffering in the world are incompatible with the notion of a benevolent and omnipotent creator. So if you, if, if your concept of a creator is someone who's all powerful and all good, that's not an uncommon pairing of powers that you might describe to a creator. All powerful and all good. And I look at disasters that afflict earth and life on earth, volcanoes, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, disease, pestilence, um, congenital birth defects. You look at this list of ways that life is made miserable on Earth by natural causes. And I just ask, how do you deal with that? So philosophers rose up and said, if there is a God, God is either not all powerful or not all good. I have no problems. If, as we probe the origins of things, we bump up into the bearded man. If that shows up, we're good to go. Okay? Not a problem. There's just no evidence of it. And this is why religions are called faiths, collectively. Because you believe something in the absence of evidence. That's what it is. That's why it's called faith. Otherwise, we would call all religions evidence. But we don't. For exactly that reason. Tyson's skepticism toward the existence of God is rooted in his preference for evidence-based reasoning and his distrust of faith-based beliefs. If there is a God, the God is either not all-powerful or not all-good. I'm evidence-driven evidence. more than I'm yeah. faith-driven. Faith he has argued that the claims made by various religions about the nature of God and the origins of the universe are not supported by scientific evidence. So, so I, I'm, I'm given what everyone describes to be the properties that would be expressed by an all-powerful being in the gods that they worship, 
I look for that in the universe and I don't find it. So I, I, I remain unconvinced. But if you've got some good evidence, uh, bring it, bring, bring it, <laughs> bring it, okay? And so I don't, I don't lead with that information because what I believe should be irrelevant to anyone. It's not about me. It's about the real world. While Tyson has expressed skepticism towards the traditional concept of God, he has also acknowledged the limitations of science in addressing metaphysical questions. He has described himself as an agnostic, meaning that he is uncertain about the existence of God and believes that the question is ultimately unanswerable. What people are really after is what is my stance on religion or spirituality or God. And I would say, and I would say if I had to find a word that came closest, it would be agnostic. Agnostic, a word dates from the 19th century. Huxley, to refer to someone who, who doesn't know but is, hasn't yet really seen evidence for it but is prepared to embrace the evidence if it's there but if it's not it won't be forced to have to think something that is not otherwise supported. Okay, I'm a scientist, I'm an educator, my goal is to get people thinking straight in the first place. Just get you to be curious about the natural world. That's what I'm about. Gather around and talk about how much everybody in the room doesn't believe in God. I just don't, I don't have the energy for that. And so I, agnostic separates me from the conduct of atheists, whether or not there's strong overlap between the two categories. And at the end of the day, I'd rather not be any category Tyson has argued that the question of God's existence is beyond the scope of scientific inquiry as it involves philosophical and theological considerations that cannot be resolved through empirical observation and experimentation alone. He has emphasized the importance of respecting the boundaries between science and religion and of acknowledging the limits of human knowledge. Despite his skepticism towards traditional notions of God, Tyson does express a sense of spiritual awe and connectedness when contemplating the universe. He has said that learning about our cosmic origins, where the atoms in our bodies were forged in stars, makes him feel quite large and a participant in the grandeur of the universe. Tyson sees this deep connection to the cosmos as a source of wonder and meaning, even if he does not attribute it to a divine creator. Well, the word spirituality used in that way does not really have an agreed upon definition. There are many people today who would say, I'm spiritual, but not religious. Okay. So in fact, that's the most common application of the word that I've seen lately. They, because they want to claim some feeling about their place in the universe, but they don't want to assign it to a deity. So they say, I'm spiritual, but not religious. Mm. Uh, I would say all of these topics are highly spiritual in the sense that they force you, compel you to think about the world well outside of yourself. And what role it all plays and who you are and what you will accomplish now and in the future. So, um, so I would say, yes, indeed it does, but it doesn't necessarily then say that there's an old man with a beard in the clouds yeah. handing us commandments about who we should sleep with, yeah. right? So no, it, it's nowhere near that. Um, to the extent that we can define the term to mean just looking up with feeling. Tyson's perspective on God and religion has been influential in shaping the discourse around the relationship between science and faith. While his views may be controversial to some, his commitment to evidence-based reasoning and his appreciation for the natural world have resonated with many who share his scientific worldview.